Hey, what's up, guys? I'm a YouTuber. It's 2017, and guess what? Fox didn't listen to me. Instead of making Avatar 2 like they should be doing, they went and they made a sequel to that Star Wars bullshit that they did two years ago. So, let's talk about the 2017 flop, The Empire Strikes Back. Okay, first of all, Fox did all this controversial shit where it just retroactively decided to call the last movie A New Hope. So that's what we're doing now. We're just changing the titles of movies willy-nilly. You can't just change a movie's title two years after it comes out. And I'm sorry, but A New Hope is probably the dumbest title for anything that I've ever heard in my life. It's so stupid. Anyway, so here we are, the sequel to Star Wars. And remember in the last movie when Darth Vader got blown out of the sky during the Death Star battle? Well, surprise! He's fine now. Because of plot convenience, I guess. They never explain why. We're off to a great start. So Luke Skywalker is hanging like upside down in this ice cave and there's like a monster about to eat him. And he uses the force to pull his lightsaber into his hand. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, I saw the last film. I don't recall anybody teaching Luke telekinesis. So how did Luke somehow magically learn to move things with his mind? I'll tell you how. He learned it from George Lucas's pen because Luke Skywalker is a shitty Mary Sue character and I hate him. And then Obi-Wan Kenobi shows up as a ghost. So now there's ghosts all of a sudden? It's pretty convenient that the ghost of a dead character just shows up and says stuff to make the plot move forward. Obi-Wan never said anything to Luke about ghosts in the last movie. You think he would have brought that up? You think it'd be kind of important like, hey, just so you know, if I ever die on this mission we're going on, don't be afraid. I'm gonna come back as a ghost and you can still talk to me and I'll still give you advice. There's no ghosts. They're just pulling stuff out of their ass. This what? A bunch of crap. How 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 do people not see that this is crap? All right, Luke, Han, and Princess Leia. I gotta admit, they make a really good team. They got a good thing going on together. But it's too bad that they only have one scene in this entire movie where they're all in the same room. And then they just separate for whatever dumb reason. Their chemistry was one of the only good parts of Star Wars A New Hope. And now you don't even have that. You take that away from us too. Ooh, let's talk about Han Solo for a minute. Okay, in part one, Han Solo has a pretty decent character arc. He's this selfish smuggler and he's gonna leave and just spend his money and go. But then at the end of the movie, he has a change of heart and he comes back and he helps the rebels and he becomes a member of the rebellion and he puts aside his selfish ways. That's a decent character arc. That makes sense. Now along comes the Empire Strikes Back and it ignores all of that character development. Because one of the first things Han Solo says in this new movie is, I'm gonna leave now, bye Rebellion, I gotta go back to my pirate life and pay off Jabba the Hutt. The Han Solo at the end of that first movie would never leave the Rebellion. He specifically stayed to save the Rebellion. Oh, and now here's more convenient BS. Casper the Friendly Jedi shows up and gives Luke advice, but he says that if Luke goes to fight Vader, he cannot interfere because of reasons, I guess. <sighs> this whole ghost thing is stupid. It ruins Star Wars. I hope Irvin Kirshner dies. So we finally get to meet the Emperor of the Galaxy, because you know, you can't really have an empire without an Emperor. It only makes sense. Too bad the Emperor only has like one scene, and he's not even really there. He's just a giant hologram that Vader talks to. That was a wasted character. In the first movie, it was kind of funny to see Vader like force choke the guys who argue with him in the Empire. I guess it was kind of cool, but now he's like doing it every 20 minutes. It's like, stop leaning on that old crutch. If somebody was really doing this, this is a really dumb way to try to run a government. Has he been acting this way for like 20 years? Has he just been a whiny bitch going around choking people? Eventually, these people are gonna just not want to work for him anymore. It was cool in the first movie, now they're just rehashing it and it makes no sense. Here's another thing that makes no sense. The romance between Leia and Han Solo. It comes out of left field and it's so 
forced. Any idiot can tell you that the romance in these films should be between Leia and Luke Skywalker. You can just tell from the way that they look at each other that these two were destined to be together. Anybody who says otherwise is stupid and wrong. They're gonna get together in part three. Trust me. If they don't, I'm boycotting this franchise. Hashtag Lake. Lake is gonna happen. Then we meet a bunch of bounty hunters and they all look pretty cool. But talk about more wasted characters. They did nothing. They barely even moved. They're clearly only there to sell toys, especially that Boba Fett guy. He's the worst character ever. They spent like two years building him up. He was in all the promo material. He was in that weird holiday special that they did. They had him on posters and like his face at the mall and they pumped out his action figure as if he was going to be a big deal. What does he do? Nothing. He like, he shoots at Luke twice, I think. Woo, neat. And speaking of Boba Fett, how in the holy name of hell does he a magically know that the falcon attached itself to that star destroyer b also know that han is going to fly to cloud city and c get there first bring vader and some stormtroopers with him cut a deal with lando and set an elaborate trap all before they get there this movie makes no goddamn sense Oh, and then we meet this guy Lando. Look, Star Wars is shoehorning in an African-American character now so that the producers can push their SJW agenda on us. All right, spoilers. Get ready for the worst sin of all. In part one, Obi-Wan tells Luke that Vader betrayed and murdered his father. But now along comes Irvin Kirshner, who just flips the middle finger in the face of that movie and says, no, I'm going to do things my way. Now Vader is Luke's father. Way to just retcon the whole story, Irvin. Why would they hire a director who clearly has no respect for what came before? Then Luke Skywalker drops hundreds of feet down a pit and is totally fine when he lands? I guess when you're a Mary Sue, little things like gravity don't really affect you like normal people. He starts calling for help and Leia somehow hears him. How can Leia hear his call for help and don't give me this bullshit that she has the power of the force too because we know it's been established that she doesn't have force powers the answer better be it's because of their extreme romantic connection if it's anything else i'm gonna riot hashtag lake don't worry lakers it's gonna happen they're meant to be together and after all that what happens next we end the movie on like some stupid cliffhanger where the bad guys win. That's horrible. Who wants to see the bad guys win? It's like these people didn't even watch part one. Hashtag not my Star Wars. Besides, any movie that ends with a cliffhanger is bad by default because it's clearly not a complete story. Bottom line, this was an idiotic, unnecessary cash grab that didn't need to exist. The story ended in the first one. It was just fine like that. But no, instead of giving us Avatar 2, Fox decided we really needed to see the next chapter in the saga of Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader, who, by the way, never even said two words to each other in the first film, because that connection was never there, it was just made up for this piece of shit. The Empire Strikes Back might be one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life, and thankfully, the rest of the internet agrees with me. Hashtag Lake. Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.